Welcome back to None Off Projects. Today we are back on the 89 LeBaron top replacement. Last time we got the old top all torn off, the frame ready to go. Today we're gonna be getting a couple parts we need to finish the top and we're gonna be getting the pattern laid back on here. We have a lot of work cut out for us, so let's not waste any time, let's get to it. We're here at the junkyard. Here's a 94 LeBaron convertible. And man, these things are ugly, ugh. Still basically the same platform as ours though. The top's torn in a couple places, you can see. But, I've got the headliner pulled back and the well liner is in pretty good shape. As opposed to ours, which is totally disintegrated and rotten. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this and uh, we'll get back and start cleaning on our own. We've got our new well liner components and they're gonna need to get clean before we put them in. But even before that, let's go ahead and clean out the actual well area because it's pretty bad. Alright, that's a significant improvement. No more leaves. I need to vacuum the trunk well, but that's okay. And the spare tire is full of water, so I'm gonna empty out the the shop vac and then we'll suck all that water out. Alright, I think that's good enough. We're not going for utter perfection here, but we've got all the, the biggest nasty stuff out. So let's go ahead and remove the support bar for the well, and along with all these push-in clip things. All right, so I'm just gonna put in the like well support, the thing that sits under the well liner. Hmm. Seems like this one is slightly different. You see the support doesn't go all the way over. So, we may need to use one of the old ones. Looks like it's still attached to the old liner. But you know what, this doesn't really support any weight. So, I think we're just going to leave it like that because I don't want to put in one of those rusty supports. They're really, really chewy. So I think we'll just leave it like this for now. It's not that hard to change it inside the car if we end up wanting to do that, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's put a couple panel clips in it. Okay, that's good enough. Now it's covered in some weird sticky residue, so I'm gonna try to clean that off with some degreaser. I really don't know what it is. You can see on my finger. It's kinda gross. I really don't know what it is, but we'll see if we can clean it off. I'm gonna try some simple green. Let that sit for a little bit. And I do need to pull up the other uh, well liner drain from the other side. Looks like I actually had that up already, so that's cool. Yeah, it's not really doing a super great job. I think we'll just leave it to be honest, which I hate to do, but it's not that bad. And plus, I mean, it sits under the well liner, so it's not like anybody's touching it. It did help a little bit. It's not nearly so sticky and gross, but I don't want to mess around with it. We'll just leave it like it is. You can always redo it later if we need to. Okay, here's our new used well liner. Uh, let's test fit it real quick. Make sure everything lines up. And if it does, then we'll clean it. And we'll go from there. Okay, so this new one is slightly different. You can see we have snaps over here that connect it to the quarter panel area. And it looks like the old well liner was held on with these nuts, which I remember taking off. Um, let's take another look at our old well liner, see if it's savable at all, uh, because this is going to be a little bit of a pain. I guess we could always use this, we'll just need to punch new holes and uh, put new nuts on it. But let's uh, avoid work if we can. Okay, here's our old well liner, and looking at it, it's really crispy, it's not worth trying to use this. So. That's okay. Um, we'll just need to modify our new one a little bit. Not a big deal. We're gonna need to take off this bar that connects it to the back seat. This one came off the old one, obviously, and it just kind of ripped out. I didn't bother unbolting it. But it is slightly different compared to the new one. The new one just has these two bolt holes, whereas the old one has a whole bunch of bolts. So we'll take all these out, and I think, luckily, our bolt holes do line up. 
And if we wanted to, we could always drill some more holes in here, but I'm sure it's rigid enough. Let's just make sure. I think, I'm trying to remember how this snaps up. We made it out side by side with the old one, and it looks like the only difference is what we already noted. The snaps on the new one, back here behind the rear bar, are bolts on the old one. So we'll need to modify the new one just a little bit, but that's the only modification it looks like. Everything else seems to line up. So I'm happy with that. We'll give this a quick clean. We're not going to put it in yet because you can put it in while the top is on. So I think it's going to be make it a little easier to install the top with this still out. So let's clean it. Okay, good enough for now. There's a couple more stubborn areas we need to readdress, but that's a good once over. Now we've got everything under the top squared away for the most part. We can start turning our attention to the frame. So the frame's not in that bad of shape. You can see there are a couple areas where the paint's worn through and it has a little bit of rust, but we'll just lube all those sections up and it should protect it enough. There's a little bit of buildup here that we're gonna uh, go over with the vacuum and some kind of scraper. But you know, beyond that, it's really not too bad a shape. <laughs> All right, we're going to use white lithium grease on all of the hinge points. All right, I was finally able to source some nylon webbing to replace the torn stuff that's on here. Now, you can get uh, real convertible webbing that's four inches, but it's like double the price of just going for four inch nylon or polypropylene webbing and also I was finding the lead times like an extra week and this stuff is exactly the same. So let's go ahead and unroll this, measure it out to about the same length as the current stuff and then we'll ensure our bow heights are accurate and then we're going to staple the new stuff down. So since our convertible webbing is mostly intact, our bow heights should still be pretty dead on and I measured them and they're pretty close to what the manual states. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a, a string of tape across so that we maintain the position of all the bows and then we'll replace each strip of webbing one at a time. Alright, we've got our electric stapler here. I'm using 18 gauge 3 8 stainless staples with this electric staple gun. You can use an air stapler too, that works. Alright, there's the first side. Now I just got to repeat the same deal over here. You can see the header tack strip is a lot thinner, so full size staples kind of like mushroom. When you staple them under there, that's why those were so hard to remove. Yeah, these staples are too long, so they're not really grabbing right. Some of these aren't penetrating all the way, but others are, so just restaple. That's pretty good. I'm gonna go through into the other side too. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how taut the other side is. This side is not tight enough. So we're gonna undo, that's why I only did a couple of staples on these. We're gonna undo these and work some tension in all the way back. Okay, now we need to double check our bow heights. So here is the service manual's diagram of the bow heights. You can see right here, you measure from a point on the tack strip all the way up to this bow and then in between each bow. So let's measure from the front back. I've got a yardstick, so I guess I should have checked this before I finished stapled it. But live and learn, right? Okay, so I think we're pretty close on all of them. I'm not too worried about it, given that we just copied basically how it was before and it seemed to work okay before. Now it's time for, well, the scary part, really. We're ready to put the window section in. So let's move over to the bench where we've got the new section laid out. So here it is. It's real bright out. Hopefully the glare is not too bad. So this is the outside, obviously, because we've got the vinyl facing out. We have these two layers here, and then the cloth interior. So you can see all these little puncture holes. These are kind of like the factory guess marks of where it around should be. And I think this mark right here, if it's showing up, is the center mark. But we're gonna double check that with our yardstick before we staple it onto the uh, trim sticks. 
so here's the old rear section and we kind of sort of ish have a pattern it's really not in very good shape you can see there's still a few staples that got to pop out before it comes out from the rear tack strip we should be able to get an idea from the old one so also I realized I marked this wrong we should have just marked along the top that makes it a lot easier need a bigger table don't I really pattern, so I guess we're just going for it. Okay, so let's double check our center on the new window section. Okay, the center seems to be pretty dead on. We got 24 and a half from the center to the edge on both sides, so I'm happy with that. Last thing you want is your window being off center. That'd be weird. And then we're going to see if all these holes line up with the holes in the tap strip. They do not. So what I'm, I'm guessing with this, what the holes are marking is the, well, let's see. It's probably the estimated place where the dots should be just at the top here. That's my guess. That's what we'll try. And we'll put it up and on. And if it needs adjusted, we'll adjust it. It's going to be a little awkward here to try to tack everything on here because you can see obviously this rear tack strip is long and it's fitted to the curve of the car. So I'm going to do my best here to get it right. So you can see I'm going from this dot. I'm putting the dot at the top of the tack strip as best I can. I'm also lining up the center dot with the dead center on the tack strip. Then we'll throw a staple on that. Obviously you try not to staple into a hole unless you want to staple to the finger. That would suck. It looks like over here we're going to have some slack to pull out. But let's just fit it up and see how our up and down adjustment is. So let's move this over into the car. Okay, so before we test fit it in, we gotta cut the slots out for the bolt holes. So I'm gonna grab a razor blade and we'll do that. There we go, let's give that a go. Probably should have stapled over here, but we'll see what happens. I'm just test fitting. I'm sure we're gonna have to do some major adjusting. That should be enough to get an idea of what we're working with here. Okay, needs to go down a ways. A good ways. You can see the zipper is basically on the tack strip. I'd say we need to go down probably about an inch. We got a ways. So let's pull the glass back out and then we can move the fabric down about an inch. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is mark where the tack strip currently is, and then I'm going to mark a line about an inch up that we can aim towards. You know what? It's pretty much dead on an inch if we just bring those dots that we were going off before down to the bottom of the tack strip. So basically this line needs to be on the bottom. Okay, so obviously I'm centering it up again. I'm making sure there's there's two layers of fabric, so I'm making sure the two layers are both nice and taut in the center. And then I'm lining up the center dot. It doesn't seem terrible. I mean, compared to a professional it probably is, but <laughs> whatever. Now we just need to cut these further back so that we can access the holes and then we can test fit again okay should be good to go for testing now so off camera i found dead center on the third bow i measured from a known mark i think i measured off these clips on this side and that side to the center 
made sure the measurements were the same both ways and then marked where that point was. And then I also stretched the <clears throat> rear window over to where I thought it would rest properly. And I have a chalk line there. And then I've got the frame propped open with a box over there. So we're going to hop in the back, pull this up to that mark, and just do a staple. And we'll do a staple in a couple different places. And then we'll lower the top back down and see how we're resting. One thing I should have done on the bench that I'm going to do now is find center on the window. Because obviously we need the center up top to line up with the center on the third bow. We're just doing a few staples to hold it up so that we can mess around with it a little bit. And I'm going to lower the top back down and see how we're doing. Okay, so I played around a little bit, looked from the rear view mirror on how it looks and everything is okay. And I'm just talking about the gap here because I don't have anything to go off of because the old pattern is pretty much garbage. Well, you know what? Actually, let's look at it. We may have a little bit to go off of. No, it looks like we unzipped it. Yeah, it might have been totally disintegrated. I don't know. I don't remember. I actually found the old zipper. So let's see how um, far it sat. Looks like the old one was about a quarter inch farther up. Maybe I'll pop those staples out and we'll pull the top up just about a quarter inch and re-staple and then we'll check again. Okay, let's check with our old one. Yep, that's just about dead on. Let's put the top back down and see how it looks. Obviously we're still tightening up the do down here on the trim stoker rear tack strip. Inside the car the positioning looks good and also from the rear it looks like it's dead on center, so that's all good to see. Let's um, put a couple staples on here. We're going to just get it even. Looks like about a finger width. And then we're going to do the rest of our tightening down here on the trim stick. Because we can just unzip up here. Okay, that should be more than enough to hold it for now. If, and if we make any, if we need to make any adjustments, it's not too many to pull. I mean, not that any is too many to pull, but it'd just be annoying if we get too many. Awesome, looks pretty good to me. Now we will unzip from up here. Well, actually, before we do that, we need to mark exactly how much we need to take out and where. You can see we need to take a fair amount out here. We've got lots of slack we need to deal with. And then over here we have some wrinkling we need to deal with. Now taking the slack out here, looks like it's going to take care of the wrinkles right there. And we don't want to go too tight because too tight promotes ripping and the tops will kind of relax once you put them on. So I'm just going to mess around a little bit and see what kind of adjustments we need to do on the rear tax strip. And we'll mark it and take it off. So I think to start we're going to take about a quarter inch out of this side from looks like it starts right here I'm gonna grab the soapstone okay so I can feel the slack down here begins right about here I'm gonna mark that now all the way at the corner here is where most of our adjustment is done because it needs to be tugged this way just slightly and also down I'd say let's mark about that much which kind of looks more like a half inch so we'll do that adjustment and also I see it's a little slack over here it's not bad actually when I'm looking at it that may be okay we may take a little bit of slack out and see but before we do any of that we're just gonna make the adjustment here because that's our biggest problem right now of course we got this power pole shadow in our way all right now you can see where we made our marks here so right here let's move this up on the table right here was where I was feeling the looseness begin so I think what we'll do is we'll pop this staple on out and we will tug this way some and go down however that much over here 
if that made sense. I'm just rambling at this point. Okay, so that's approximately how much we need to take out over here. Maybe we'll sneak up on it and just have it. Because we're also pulling this way because I don't want to cut away too much. Let's make sure we're stapled over here too. Yep. Okay, we just need to cut away a little bit on here. And we should be good to test fit. Let's go ahead and test fit it. All right, here we go, let's load it to. Okay, we still have some to take up here. Fair amount, actually. It's less, which is good. Let's actually mark, um, and it actually kind of moved over. Remember, it was really bad right here, but now it's more so over here. So once we tighten that up, I think we'll be pretty good. Not really that wrinkled, which I'm surprised. There's a little bit of wrinkling, but I think it'll settle out. It looks way worse on the camera. I just looked. Well, I think it's the way the light's catching up. Okay, so again, we're gonna. Readjust over here. The other side also needs some slack taken out, similar to this side. Hmm, maybe we should just go to the table. Give that a go. Ah, oh, I totally forgot to cut the holes. I forgot to cut the whole new holes on the fabric. Let's see if it'll work or not. Okay, so looks like we've still got more adjusting to do here. Better, but certainly needs a little bit more. Ready? Test fit 70, whatever. I lost count. We're looking way better over here. Could maybe stand to tighten it up even a little bit more. We'll see. It's not that bad. But over here, I mean, wrinkle wise, we're not looking terrible. Just some little ones over here, which would probably work out. But I want it a little tighter. You can see it's just flopping around a little bit here. So we'll probably take, I don't know, maybe a little less than a quarter inch out from the center tacks. Over here, we're looking nice and tight. But it just gets quite a bit looser as we go over here. Let's go check the other side. Could stand to tighten this up a little bit more. Well, not stand, it needs tightened up a little bit more. Not bad right here. So yeah, I think really we just need to tighten the center up and then we'll tighten this up probably the same amount that we tighten this side up. The center, I mean. Yeah, and then the rear window will be just about done. Okay, another test. This side looks good. I tightened up that side is, I think, all I did, if I remember right. This side's looking pretty good. I like the amount of tension right here. Is the only adjustment that we need to do now, I think. We just need to bring it down a quarter inch or so. I need to mark it and then we'll do it. So I'll bring you guys back once I get that done and then we'll staple it up for good if everything checks out. Guys, next try. It's looking pretty good. I think I'm happy with where it's at. See, there's some tiny wrinkles. Ooh, not even showing up on camera, cool. But I think they're gonna work out no problem with some sitting on here. See, I tighten up the center. Now, it's not crazy tight. I don't want to go crazy tight because the vinyl will shrink over time and I don't want it to tear over here. <clears throat> One thing I did notice is we've got these bolts in here holding on the chrome trim. So eventually, I would imagine that's going to wear through the vinyl. So I am going to, once we're done with the top, try to figure something out to cover those. Maybe a rubber plug or something because definitely don't want to have to do this again in the near future. So that's one thing to look into, you guys, if you're doing this on your own. Yeah, so I'm really happy with that. 
So yeah, let's take the rear tack strip back out and get the stay straps on. That's the webbing that goes from down here onto the tack strip up to here. The one over there is actually already in place. It's the old one. We'll have to see if we need to replace it or not. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so actually looking at the rear window section again, um, I let it sit for a while and you know, I think it could stand to be tightened up just a little bit more. You see it's a little loose over here. So we'll take it back out and do one more adjustment and then we'll uh, test fit it again. All right, I tightened it up about a half inch or quarter inch, I forget. But anyways, it's looking good up here. But one thing I did notice is these are two layers and you can see it's floppy down here. So what I'm thinking is I didn't pull the lower layer tight. So maybe what I'll do is I'll take it back out. I'll um, unstaple. I'll pull the staples in each section and just pull the second layer taut, restaple, and then we'll see how that lays. All right, I did a few more adjustments. Got it a little tighter over here. I'm pretty happy with how it's laying down in the center. Got some small wrinkles, but I think they'll work out, no problem. I don't want to get it too, too tight. Pretty nice over here. The only thing, which it really isn't that bad, this side sits about three or four millimeters higher than over here, but I think it's the the pattern. I don't think it's actually the way I laid it on there because the measurement from here up to the zipper is the exact same as the other side. So I'm pretty sure the window's in there a little cocked or the pattern's in there a little cocked, but I mean, nobody's gonna notice four millimeters when you're just looking at the back of a car and it's not like it's a show car, so I don't care at this point. I'm not gonna mess around with it anymore. I'm happy with how this is laying down, so let's get the stay straps on and then we can start putting the top on. Okay, since I'm happy with how everything's laying, I'm gonna go ahead and finish stapling up because I just tacked everything up so that, um, you know, we could readjust if we needed to. I'll also cut off all the excess and then we'll uh, put it back in after we put the stay straps in. All right, so the top came with these straps which are actually already pre-cut to the right length. So I guess I'm just gonna use these instead of nylon webbing. I don't know if there's an improvement. I think these are vinyl, woven vinyl or something. So we'll try it and see. Oh yeah, let's finish stapling up here at the top part of the zipper. The straps do seem a little short. You can only staple part of it, but they are a lot wider than the old ones. So I don't know, we'll give it a go. All right, now that we got those on, it's time to put the top on. So we don't have a pattern to go off because the old top is totally shredded. So we're just gonna go off the factory marks on here. Kind of like we did on the uh, window section. We're just gonna probably have to adjust a bunch of times, but that's okay. So let's go grab the quarter tack panels. And we'll also need to pop the rear tack panel out so that we can get it on over here. All right, I'm gonna sneak up on it just so we don't cut too far. But yeah, let's just go straight for the holes actually now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, before we go much further, I'm going to put the um, listing rods in. Obviously, we need to make sure it's centered. Alright, now we can go ahead and drop the tack strips in and bolt them up and see how it goes after I cut these holes. Popped it open so there's a little less tension. I've just been popping in the uh, trim sticks. All right, trim sticks are all bolted up, so let's see how it looks when we drop it. Almost got it. It's pretty tight. Okay, here we are. Honestly, not bad for the first go of it. I was expecting worse. Looks like we need to move the quarter panel trim stick over here forward a little bit, take care of those wrinkles, and then the part that we're going to glue up will help even a little bit more. Up here is nice, nice and tight. Obviously this is going to tighten up a little bit more once we get the header bolted up, not bolted up, sorry, stapled up. 
over here. This could stand to tighten up a little bit. Drop that down a little bit farther. And let me set you guys up so I can use both hands to mess around with this. So yeah, we need to take some slack out over here, here. You probably need to move this tack strip forward a little bit. All right, I've got both sides marked here. So, I mean, just like the rear window, we're gonna need to pull it off and adjust a whole bunch of times probably. So I'm gonna yank it off, move the staples over to where we're, we need them to be, and then we're gonna test fit it back up. All right, I went ahead and did an adjustment. Um, so we're gonna pop it back in and see how it lays. All right, did a few adjustments, and I think we're right about where we need to be, because these flaps get pulled over here and cemented in, and you can see if it really put the tension on there, it pulls those wrinkles out, so I think we're gonna call that good. The other side is very similar. So yeah, let's keep moving. Now before we go too crazy gluing everything up, we need to mark. We need to put some marks so that we know how we need to lay everything down because we're gonna have to take tension off to get this where it needs to go. All right, we also need to mark up where the top goes onto the header bow. All right, camera turned off because it's too hot outside, I guess. Okay, I've got both sides glued up. Uh, let's go ahead and put the weather strip rail in and then put the top up and see how it lays. All right, I got the quarter panel weather strip channels in. You can see I actually probably should have pulled it a little bit more taut. So we'll see if I need to adjust that. Well, I do if I want it to look perfect. Uh, I've got the top latched. And you can see the wrinkles did clear up quite a bit. It's still pretty loose right here. So I'm not super happy with that. We're gonna need to tighten it up down here, unfortunately. On the other side, well, for one, it looks like our window loosened up a little bit, so we gotta tighten that up. The other side is a little bit better, same story though. It needs tightened up right here. Nice and tight right here, and then it's loose. Same story right here. Nice and tight, and then loose. So we'll need to see what we can do about that. This side's a little better than the other side. We could try steaming it. I have seen people steam tops and clear up a lot of questionable looking stuff, so we might give that a go. It is a little tight here, but steam might help. So maybe I'll uh, fire up the steam cleaner and see if that'll help get everything tightened up. So I got the steamer here. Let's see what happens. Wow, that actually helped more than I thought it would. Okay, let's see how the other side does. Well, the steam made a much bigger difference than I expected it to. I'm actually pretty happy with this side. Little loose right here, but I think it's gonna tighten up no problem after it sits for a little while. Over here, it didn't tighten up quite as much. It's not bad, and I honestly am kind of tempted to just leave it, because I mean, can always adjust it later I guess so we'll see but I think really what needs to happen to make it perfect is this needs to go over just a tiny bit just a hair you can see the wrinkles work themselves out if this just goes over like I don't even know less than a quarter of an inch but really not bad I could even work on it with more steam that may do something but we also may gain a little bit of tension once we get the header stapled up here so maybe we'll do that and then we'll see how we're doing and go from there go ahead and got our tension cables in watch this one not sitting out of the way because I need to put the plug in so it doesn't come out and then it's just bolted in over here on the back you saw that on disassembly 
So we'll just sit that down and then we can get the top stretched over to the header and see where we need to staple it down. So the header tack rail is quite a bit more shallow, I guess you could say, than the other tack rail. So you want to switch to a much shorter staple so that they don't bottom out. All right, well, it turns out you can't even get anything shorter than quarter inch for the T-50 guns. So we'll see how this does. It does not look pretty, i got to be honest. Although the, the staples originally did look like this too, so I guess that's a common problem even at an upholstery shop, which is where I'm assuming the old top was installed. It may have even been original to the car. Who knows? Because it had a wire on. All right, well, let's uh, set it down and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna need two hands. All right. Well, not bad. I'm happy with that amount of tension. Looks pretty good up here. I know, okay. It's looking like a real convertible now. Doesn't look horrible over here. You can see it's a little loose, but it looks worse in the camera with the glare on it. You can't really see that in real life. Over here is even a little better. I need to clean the top. See the steam got it all dirty. I don't know why, because it's distilled wire. That should probably be adjusted. But yeah, it's looking good. A little loose up here maybe. Although I don't want to go crazy tight. So like I'm saying, it'll kind of relax over the next month or whatever. Plus, it's between the two listings anyways, so there's not a ton of adjustment you can do there. That would be bow height adjustment. That's the cable poking through a little bit. Yeah, well, not bad. All right, so with the header on and, you know, pretty spot on enough for me, Normally now you would go and do the third bow. Now I didn't realize this until just now, but the LeBaron in 89 or whenever the first, 87 or whatever, whenever the first uh, new body style was released, had a wire on trim that goes on here. So you would staple the third bow on to the tack strip and then you'd put the wire on trim on like many other convertibles. Apparently in 90, Chrysler changed to a listing on the third bow. So just like the first two bows, there's a pocket in here that a listing goes in and it screws into the frame. Now, this is an 89 obviously, so it doesn't have the provision for that and I don't know exactly how the 90 and up had the listing installed. So I either need to staple and wire on or just leave it and I have tried putting the top up and down a couple times it seems to do fine without staples there and I know this probably is not the proper way to do it but I think for now I'm gonna leave it if I run into issues I can staple it and just put a wire on on it and just have to deal with this annoying thing uh, but the top on this thing is not gonna be used very much it's gonna be up 99% of the time so I think we'll just leave it and see how it does but if you're doing this, that's one thing to be aware of. If you have a later LeBaron, make sure you get the listing in and screwed down. If you have an earlier top, a topless pattern for the earlier LeBarons, then now is the time when you'd staple across, you'd staple the wire on, and then you'd close the wire on. There's lots of videos of that kind of thing, so... This, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to leave it for now, and I know that is kind of the hack way to do it, but we'll see how it does. I mean... It's going to be nice enough for this car, let's be honest. There's not much paint left on the trunk. <laughs> okay, with that out of the way, we need to finish stapling the header down, and then we need to put our feature strip on. A little bit of trimming of the excess stuff, and I think we'll be good on that. You know, it's not perfect over here, but it is what it is, and I'm happy with it. Same story over here, that's fine. Fine by me. Obviously, we need to do it clean and then condition it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. I think that's about it. I mean, obviously, we need to put our weather stripping back in the channels. We need to install the front weather stripping channel. We need to install the well liner and the headliner. But all of that is the exact reverse of removal. So I don't think I'm going to cover that and make this any longer. Because that should all be pretty dang easy if you've gotten this far. 
and probably not very interesting to watch anyways. I've got a little bit of adjustment back here I'll probably do, but you guys have seen more than enough of that. Is it perfect and what you'd get from a professional? Probably not. Is it good enough? It is more than good enough for me, and it's more than good enough for this car, let's be honest here. So I'm really happy with this. Hopefully you either enjoyed this, or if you're also replacing your top on a LeBaron, hopefully this maybe helped you out a little bit, gave you a bit of confidence to do it. It's definitely not an easy job. It's doable as long as you're happy with a few imperfections like I am. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will uh, see you guys later.